In this video, I will demonstrate how to use Keras and TensorFlow machine learning libraries to approximately solve a quadratic equation. So, here is a general form of a quadratic equation. A, B, and C are the coefficients, the known coefficients, and X is unknown variable. And the solution is given by the famous quadratic formula. So, in layman terms, our main goal is to teach a neural network to solve the equation 1. Or, to be more precise, precise, to teach the network how to approximate the solution x1 and 2 given by the equation 2. So, if we have a neural network, let's call it an NN, and if we give certain values of the input parameters a, b, and c, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, the network should produce the solutions x1 and x2. Now, these graphs are actually showing the prediction performance. The blue circles are the exact solution given by the equation 2 and the red crosses are the prediction generated by a neural network four different parameters used to train the network. More details about these parameters will be given later in the video. So what is our approach for training the network? We first need to have a training data. How do we generate training data? Well, we generate random samples of A, B, and C coefficients and for these coefficients, we generate solutions given by the formula 2, x1 and x2. The coefficients a, b, c's are called the input data, and the solutions x1 and 2 are called the output data. Besides the training data, we also need to have two additional sets of data. The first set is the set of validation data and the second set is the set of the training data. The validation data will be used during the network training in order to validate the prediction performance of the network and to select the best model. The test data will be used at the end of the training process to compute the performance of the final model. So let us start with the explanation of the code. The line 1 is used to import a library for handling vet vectors and matrices. The second line is used to import a library for uh, plotting. The third line is the library for handling complex number the line 4 is the line used to uh, import a library for computing the time it takes for certain part of the code to execute. This is very important, as you will see later. The line 5 is basically a line for importing TensorFlow. And the line 6, 7 are used to import uh, Keras functions for defining uh, a neural network. Lines 8 and 9 are used to import again Keras functions for defining solvers and the line 10 is used to import a function for saving the best model. We will talk about these functions later. Next we need to define a sample number. So what is a sample number? Basically the sample number is the number of data points 
that we will use to train the networks. When we say the data points, we mean input and output data points. So in this case, the sample number is 10,000, and this means that we will have 10,000 input samples, that is, 10,000 random selections of A, B, and C coefficients, and we will have 10,000 x1s and x2s. So let us proceed with the definition of the training data. The coefficients A, B, and C are defined on the lines 2 until 4. They're generated as random vectors having 10,000 rows and one column. And every entry is a random number generated from a uniform distribution defined on the interval 0, 1. Next, we stack uh, A train, B train, and C train vectors next to each other to form the input matrix used for training. The next step is to define the output matrix. This output matrix is defined using the for loop starting at the line 14. So, how do we define the output data? Well, on line 15, we use the quadratic formula to generate the solution x1. For coefficients a, b, and c. Line 16 is used to define the solution x2. Now, line 17 until 20 are used to extract the real and imaginary part parts of the solutions x1 and x2. And these real and imaginary parts are stacked next to each other to form the output matrix that is used for training the network. So what did we do? For every set of input parameters, which are coefficients a, b, and c, we have another set of the output parameters containing real and imaginary parts of the exact solutions. So, every sample has three inputs and every sample has four outputs. Using the same procedure, we generate the validation data and the test data. It should be stressed that training data is independent from validation data and the validation data is independent from the test data. And of course, the training data is independent from the test data. The next step is to define a neural network. So, on line 4, we are saying to Python that we are going to use a CPU to perform computation. You can change line 4 to use, for example, a GPU. But in this case, uh, this is a small-scale problem and we don't need a GPU. So the lines 6, 7, 8, and 11 are defining the network architecture. In this case, we have four layers and every layer has a certain number of neurons. For example, the layer defined on the, on the line 9 has 20 neurons. The layer defined on number 6 line has 5 neurons. The line 11 is used to define an optimizer. The line 17 until 19 are used to define a model checkpoint. A model checkpoint is used to save the model with the best validation performance. The line 21 is used to 
train the network. We provide the training data and the validation data. However, you cannot see the validation data due to the screen limitations. In order to see the complete line 21, refer to the post that is accompanying this video. Lines 28 until the line 41 are used to plot the learning and the validation curves. And the line 46 is used to load the network with the best validation performance. So this is our final network. And then lines 48 until 50 are used to generate the prediction data based on uh, the test input data. And the lines 53 and 79 are used to basically plot the prediction data and to compare it with the test data. Now, here are the results. So here you can see here you can see the results for six experiments. The blue circles are the exact solutions and the red crosses are the predicted solutions. These these plots are generated for different experimental conditions. What are the experimental conditions? Well, we changed the number of samples. We changed the network architectures. We added more layers, decreased, increased the layers. And we have also changed the type of the activation functions. You can see that these results are not perfect and they can be improved by basically increasing the number of samples, increasing the number of epochs, etc. These plots are showing the validation and the training losses during the network training. And finally, here are the uh, experimental conditions for all six experiments that are performed.